everyone so today we are going to learn on anaerobic respiration also known as fermentation i hope you are ready and let's do this so before we go into anaerobic respiration let us recap a little on aerobic respiration now from previous lesson you know that cellular respiration always starts with glycolysis from there, there, there are two pathways which are determined by the presence of oxygen. If oxygen is available, then aerobic respiration will occur in the mitochondria. And in the mitochondria, the pyruvate is broken down in a series of biochemical reaction with the presence of oxygen into inorganic molecules which are the carbon dioxide, water and energy. But if there is no oxygen available, then anaerobic respiration will occur. So today, our topic will be more on anaerobic respiration. Well, we have to go through the learning objectives first. In this lesson, you should be able to state the factors that cause fermentation to occur in cells. You should be able to explain by using examples energy production from glucose during fermentation in human muscle cells, lactobacillus, the bacteria, yeast, and also in plants such as paddy. Then you must be able to write and explain word equation for lactic acid fermentation and alcohol fermentation. Then you must also be able to compare and contrast between aerobic respiration and fermentation. Of course, 7.3.4, we can't do it because you have to conduct the experiment in the laboratory. But from this lesson, you will be able to gain all the objectives given. So before we begin, let me ask you a question. Now, microorganisms such as yeast and bacteria usually play an important role in the fermentation process to produce food. Now, explain why yogurt can spoil if it's not kept in the refrigerator. Hmm. Let me tell you, the sugar in milk is actually oxidized by bacteria such as lactobacillus and streptococcus into lactic acid that solidifies the milk and produces a sour taste until curd is formed. So when kept in the fridge, the low temperature controls the bacterial activity from reproducing and therefore spoiling the product. But if kept at room temperature, the curd will spoil as bacteria will continue to grow and oxidize the milk sugar. Okay, so fermentation is different from aerobic respiration in its metabolic pathway after glycolysis stage. Now, after glycolysis, the pyruvate produced will undergo either alcohol fermentation or lactic acid fermentation in the cytoplasm. Now, fermentation is actually the incomplete breakdown of glucose in conditions of limited oxygen or without oxygen. Um, both lactic acid and alcohol fermentation occurs in anaerobic condition in the cytoplasm of the cell. Now, lactic acid fermentation occurs in the animal cell, for example, the human muscle cells, and some bacteria, for example, the lactobacillus, whereas alcohol fermentation occurs in yeast and plants, for example, the paddy plant. Now, we know that glucose is broken down into pyruvate through glycolysis and in the absence of oxygen, pyruvate will carry out the fermentation process. So, in lactic acid fermentation, pyruvate is broken down into lactic acid whereas in alcohol fermentation, pyruvate is broken down into ethanol, a type of alcohol and carbon dioxide. So, both fermentation processes produces two molecules of ATP. For every molecule of glucose, which is about 210 kJ of energy in alcohol fermentation and 150 kJ of energy in lactic acid fermentation. Okay, so alcohol fermentation is useful in industry for brick, beer and wine production. 
Now, when yeast is stored in anaerobic conditions with glucose, alcohol fermentation occurs with the aid of zimis to produce ethanol, carbon dioxide, and energy. Each glucose molecule is broken down incompletely to two ethanol molecules to produce two ATP molecules. So the total energy release is about 210 kJ per mole. A large amount of energy is actually stored as chemical energy in the ethanol molecules. However, the large accumulation of ethanol is toxic to the yeast and can kill the yeast. Okay, so some plants like the paddy plant can carry out temporary alcohol fermentation in anaerobic conditions. Mm, when the paddy plants are heavily flooded in high levels of flood water for a long time, the oxygen supply to this area is cut off. So in this anaerobic environment, the root cell of the paddy plant will undergo alcohol fermentation uh, in which the chemical equation is actually the same with the fermentation in yeast. So, although ethanol is toxic to most plants, the root cells of paddy plants have high tolerance towards ethanol compared to the other plants. So, next we will see the lactic acid fermentation in lactobacillus. Now, the bacteria lactobacillus can carry out lactic acid fermentation on sugar. For example, uh, glucose, sucrose, fructose, galactose, and lactose in anaerobic condition to produce lactic acid and energy. And this uh, bacteria is commonly used to produce sour tasting foods such as yogurt and also cheese. Okay, now let's look at lactic acid fermentation in the human cells. Now, muscle cells can carry out lactic acid fermentation in short period of time if the oxygen supply for aerobic respiration is insufficient, usually during vigorous training. Now, during this prolonged and repeated muscle cell contraction that occurs actually during the runner's 200 meter sprint, the requirement of the muscle cells for ATP supply will suddenly increase. Now, the supply of oxygen uh, by the blood circulation and also lungs is now unable to meet the demand of the muscle cells to produce the ATP that is needed through aerobic respiration to enable the muscle contraction. So now, the situation here is where the need for oxygen exceeds the supply of oxygen which causes oxygen debt to occur. Yeah, oxygen debt. Now, in condition of the lack of oxygen, the muscle cell now will carry out the lactic acid fermentation to produce ATP needed by the muscle cell, where each molecule of glucose will be incompletely broken down into two lactic acid molecules and two ATP molecules with the total energy release about 150 kJ per mole. Okay, so the accumulation of high level of lactic acid in the muscle cells due to lactic acid fermentation causes fatigue, pain and muscle cramps. Now you know why you get your cramps. Hence, lactic acid must be removed from the body. As soon as the activity is over, the athlete usually breathes deeply and rapidly to obtain ample amount of oxygen in order to pay back the oxygen debt. Now, the excess of oxygen is then used to oxidize the lactic acid into carbon dioxide, water, and energy. And this usually occurs in the liver. Now, a part of the lactic acid is eliminated by converting it into glucose and glycogen to be stored in the liver and also the muscle cell. Now, oxygen debt is paid after excess oxygen is taken in to eliminate the lactic acid accumulated. So now let's go through this figure together. This figure shows the usage of oxygen at rest during vigorous activity and also during recovery. Now let's look at during vigorous activity. During vigorous activity, the rate of oxygen use exceeds the oxygen supply. Now the muscle is said to undergo oxygen debt. 
Now, during this process, the incomplete breakdown of glucose produces lactic acid and energy. Now, once the vigorous activity stops, the intake of excess oxygen will oxidize the lactic acid into carbon dioxide, water and energy. Now, when all lactic acid has been expelled, the oxygen depth is now repaid. Now, let's check whether you understand this topic or not. Mm, okay, a 100 meter sprinter usually holds his breath while running compared with a long distance runner. Now, after running, the sprinter needs 7 liters of oxygen to remove the lactic acid in his muscle cells. Explain this difference between the sprinter and the long distance runner. Tell me. Okay, so a 100 meter runner complete the race fast by holding their breath. Okay, so by doing so, the runner uses the existing oxygen efficiently. However, the lactic acid is accumulated because the oxygen supply to the muscle is insufficient. Okay, but on the other hand, a long distance runner who runs at slower speed are able to dispose of the lactic acid accumulated in the early stage of running. Now, this long distance runner cannot hold their breath because lactic acid accumulation causes rapid muscle fatigue. So, as such, long distance runners need to breathe throughout the race. So, with that, you should be able to tell the similarities and differences between aerobic respiration which you have learned in your previous lesson and also fermentation which you have learned in this lesson so there's this diagram here given you can use this and uh, fill in the blanks given to make sure that you actually understand the difference between aerobic respiration and fermentation no referring to books so with that um, we are done actually for this topic to understand further on anaerobic respiration, you can scan the code given in your textbook, page 118, to watch a video link on YouTube to enhance your understanding. I hope it will help. Okay, so once you are done with all that, you need to answer the questions from Formative Practice 7.3 in page 121 to test your understanding. The questions are as such. Okay. Firstly, state where the process of fermentation usually occurs. Give three examples of microorganisms and food produced by the fermentation process. Okay, the third question is a uh, hot question. Now, while helping your father to cut the grass at the farm, you came across a snake. Terrified, you run away from the snake. Now, explain the cellular respiration that takes place in the muscle cells of your leg. And lastly, state the difference between aerobic respiration and fermentation. The previous one, same thing. Okay, so go through that and I hope you will be able to answer all these questions after learning this subtopic. Hmm... So with that said, I will end my video here. Thank you for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe my channel. Bye.